today on Unlocked, we have, who you may recognize from Chrisley Knows Best, Jay DeMarcus. <laughs> <laughs> One of the stars of Chrisley Knows Best. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to do now. It's my favorite thing. Because what's your line? In wow. case you don't know, he's obviously from Rascal Flats, which was huge. Yeah, but nobody knows me from Rascal Flats. Why? Every time I get recognized out, I like puff my chest up. I'm like, they're going to want a picture because of all the great music that I've put out. And they walk up and go, we love you on Chris Lee Knows Best. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm dead. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter that I sold 40 million records and had 17 number ones. They know me from the TV show. Oh, that's that's got to feel so good. It actually is kind of <laughs> nice, actually, that you don't just get recognized for one thing. But that's the power of television, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I've always had a face for TV anyway. I mean, more so a voice, but we'll go with face. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> no, I love you. Okay, so let's go ahead and squash one thing. Yeah. People saying, so are you still friends with the Chrisleys? Yeah, yeah. I, it's You've gotten that. Yeah, I, I find it so bizarre that people ask if you're still friends with someone. I mean, if you're really friends with somebody and you really love somebody, don't you love them unconditionally? That's yeah. the way I've always seen it. And, you know, I, I feel the same way you do. It's like once I'm in the trenches with somebody, I'm not going to leave them. I'm yeah. going to stick by them and I'm going to support them. And I'm going to love them mm -hmm. and be there any way I can. So I've always found it a little silly that people go, hey, are you still friends with them? Do you still speak with them? I, it's just so stupid. It really is yeah. because you have like consistently checked in. Yeah. I mean, I love you guys. Yeah. You're, you're a huge part of our lives and yeah. we consider you guys our extended family. And I hope you feel the same way. But I mean, it's just, it's crazy to me. I, I love you guys and I want the best for you guys. And I'm always praying for you and pulling for you and Thank everything. Thank you. So you hadn't jumped ship. That's good. No, nope, I'm sitting no. right beside you here. Well, two feet away from you here. <laughs> I'm done. Okay. So Rascal Flats. Yeah. Good yeah. band. Great. Good band. Good no, band. we had an amazing 20 plus year run, you know. That's insane. And I think for us, the, the thing that happened is we burnt the candle at both ends for so long and we mm -hmm. toured and we did another record and we would do press and we tour and we do another record and we would do press and it was a never ending cycle and but it's it hard worked. it did work but it's hard to put the machine down or put the brakes on when everything is cruising along and going full speed ahead and for us we should have taken a break at some point just a year off just to kind of collect ourselves mm -hmm. hit the reset button and i feel like we got to the point of just being burnt out and not knowing how to stop and how to just go okay everybody we need to take a break for ourselves for our own mental health and for our own um i don't know relationships i think yeah. that everybody needs a little time away <laughs> everybody does need a little time away and i think that maybe we stayed in a couple of years too long when we should have taken a break do you think if you would have taken a break you would still be working on music today i i would like to think so i i think that the uh if we'd have had a chance to do the farewell tour in 2020 and the pandemic hadn't happened who knows where we'd be today we might have a greater appreciation for it but i think that we were so uh, at the point of exhaustion and i think we had other things that we wanted to do individually that yeah uh it may we may still be making music but we may still be on the path to trying some other things you know i think mm -hmm. everybody comes to that point to where no matter how much you love somebody no matter how much you've been through together there are always things that you want to do yourself that may not be in line with the other partners or whatever. And I know yeah. Gary always wanted to do a solo record. I always kind of wanted to do my own thing and produce a little more, develop other acts. I don't know really what Jodon wanted to do, except for go play golf at all the country <laughs> clubs he was a member of. So, <laughs> but we all kind of had our own things that we wanted to try and do, and that was gonna happen sooner or later. Yeah. Okay, so was it, because you, you guys were like the Backstreet Boys of country music. Well, I, we, we, we were? Yeah, I think so. We played you don't our, see it? We played our own instruments, though. Oh, touche. Yeah, touche. We did. Okay, so And I don't have those moves. You, You've seen me dance. It's terrible. It's terrible. I know. It's terrible. Know. And looking back at y'all's wardrobe in the day, oh my gosh. I mean, it was hip when it was oh, current. Was it? 
I mean, I don't like to look back at those photos either. It was there were some rough <laughs> times there. I have no idea what was going on with my hair. There was but about thank five or God six. God, you have switched up your hair. Even just yeah. since I've known you, finally you let it go, and you no longer look like like Jimmy Neutron. You know? <laughs> oh, wow. All right. <laughs> I thought I was man. I didn't know I was going to come on here to get insulted. That's awesome. Thanks. Hey, it's okay. You need to feel good about yourself. Come on, Savannah's podcast. <laughs> Isn't that what you've always said? You need to feel good about yourself. Go to like Chris Lee. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know where you can get torn down, but you build me right back up. See, I do. I'm like a Sour Patch Kid, you know? I like it. Sour like than it. sweet. No, I have questions about my hair back then too. I okay. have no idea why Allison wanted to hang out with me when it looked that way. Yeah. It was bad. It, it was bad. It was. It was bad. But everybody was sort of doing that back then, you know? Yeah, sure. Everyone was doing that. I'm going to keep telling myself that. Anyway. <laughs> keep telling yourself that. So when you were on the road, I yeah. mean, you said 20 plus years. Well, when... I've been on the road since I was 15. So even before, I long before. I forgot about that. Long before Rascal Flats ever existed, I was on the road, always in bands with older guys, and I would spend my summers touring. In fact, I got a scholarship to Lee University, and the only way I could keep it was to tour my summers off of school with the recruiting ensemble, which was called New Harvest at that time. And we'd go around to youth camps and churches and conventions and recruit for the school. So I've literally been on the road most of my entire life. That's crazy. And so was that, did you ever, was it ever a challenge for you? Like Diz, was it just something you were passionate about or did you encounter like the drugs, the- Oh, I was, was around there? all of it, you know? Yeah. I, I, I was exposed to everything, but I spent a lot of my time in Christian music and uh, most of the drugs were there. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally joking. <laughs> I spent a lot of my time in Christian music. So, you know, it was, they're, they're pretty clean lifestyles out there. And then once I get into the mainstream pop and country world, obviously it was everywhere and it was accessible, but thank God I was not one of those people that had a highly addictive personality yeah. and let their you know, lives circle the toilet after one <laughs> night's bad decision. So it was, it was easy for me. I don't know. I had, I had pretty good self-control. Okay. That's a, cause see, I had and Lance Bass on yeah, and he spoke about his experience and it was just crazy to hear. Yeah. I think that you can go one way or the other. I was always scared to death that if I tried something. Well, you're a hypochondriac. I am. So I'm, I'm hypersensitive and really worry about the least little thing. Yeah. That's, that's very true. You know that about me. So it always scared me that if I, if I were to try crack one night, that it would destroy my life. And I loved and respected music too much to let it yeah. ruin the thing that I love the most. Well, yeah. Cause we all share the same family doctor. Yes, we do. <laughs> And we all yeah. joke because you and dad, the first sight of anything, oh my God, am I dying? Do I have cancer? Is it this? Is it that? Like <laughs> He told me to stop sending pictures of myself to him while he was at dinner one night with his family. Because <laughs> I always do that. What does this bump look like to you? Does this look bad? And he's like, I'm at family. I'm at my family dinner. Can you please stop sending me photos? <laughs> Can you please stop? He's a saint. That He really is. I know. It's the stuff he puts up with. I know. It's true. I have him on speed dial. He's in my favorites. Every time something <laughs> no. goes wrong. Or if I cough twice in a row. Oh, God. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. You're dying. I got cancer <laughs> of the esophagus. It felt weird. It just felt weird. <laughs> I cannot. Yeah. Okay, so we know you're a hypochondriac. That's uh -huh. a very obvious thing. So you were always just too afraid of screwing up your career. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I'm not going to sit here and try to convince you that I was perfect by any, we way, all know, by any no. means, but um, I, we had a lot of fun, you know, um, it, it just was not something that I was ever interested in trying to screw my life up with. Yeah. I've seen too many people go down that dark rabbit hole of getting addicted to pills and drugs and everything. And it's not pretty when someone you care about spirals out of control. Like yeah. That. Well, it's tough because, and I feel like we're very similar in that aspect. Like I've seen it firsthand, so it immediately turned me away from it. Yeah. Versus yeah. other people, you see it, you may fall right into it as well. Yeah, that's so true. And I, you were raised much like I was. My mom drug me to church all the time anyway, so I've got this curse of this guilty conscience. So I always like, there's a line out there somewhere when I get close to it and I feel like I'm crossing it, yeah. I always have this massive weight of guilt. You yeah. Know? But I also feel like, not to 
you know, over sensationalize it, but I feel like that's the Holy Spirit a little bit too, like kind of checking you and yeah. kind of going, you know, better than this. Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know? So I'm grateful for that barometer too, kind of, it's been <laughs> constantly in my life. Yeah. And you know, my faith is really important to me and that I feel like it's kept me centered more often than not. For sure. And too, so how many tours did you guys have? Well, we did, we opened up for, uh, in the beginning, we opened up for Toby Keith, Kenny Chesney took us out. God, very he's first my tour, guy. Yeah. Very first tour was with Jody Messina. Okay. And then, then we headlined about our fourth year out and we kind of never looked back. So, you know, 13, 14 headline tours. That's or something crazy. Like that. And we had a great track record of openers too. Yeah. Everybody from, you know, Taylor Swift to Jason Aldean, Blake Shelton. So we had a really good run of that's amazing people that and you know went on to be superstars in their own right that's amazing so when did you get married i got married in 1964. shut up <laughs> it feels like not. it's been that long uh, <laughs> at first my dumbass is like <laughs> you're doing the math <laughs> he's 78 years old dear god <laughs> Uh, I got married in 2004. I met her on the set of the These Days video in 2002. All right, so we have to talk about this because I will never forget it. It was scandalous. Allison was sitting at my table and we were talking about someone else and the industry and I was like, he should have known when he met her on the set of his music video that shit was never going to work. I know. And she looked at me and goes, bitch keep talking <laughs> and i was like oh no oh, i love it yeah i love it i was uh i sat beside her in the makeup chair first thing in the morning and i mean you know she was gorgeous yeah so i was like hey what are you doing <laughs> shut down immediately she was not having any of it and she was engaged but i didn't know it because they made her take her ring off yeah. for the video shoot so i had no idea the whole time that she was engaged mm -hmm. and i'm over there my idiot self trying to hit on her the whole time <laughs> sit down beside her at lunch spilled my salad all over no yeah it was disastrous but i kept running into her all over town and the more i ran into her i'd never seen her in my life and then after yeah. the video i ran into her at green hills grill and i ran into her at another bar that we all used to go to and the trace and so finally after the third time i was like we gotta at least go have lunch like i, I keep seeing you everywhere yeah and then once we had that lunch it was i was hooked you know no way that's so when did she call for engagement? We sort of, uh, we went to that lunch. Um, we hung out a little bit, but not much because she, cause she was like, I'm engaged. And we kept like, I would text her and we yeah. would stay in touch. And then finally she called and she was like, you got to leave me alone. Like I'm, I'm getting ready to get married. And then she called me again about a week later and she was like, I hate this. Like you've really screwed my life up. I was, I thought I had this plan and now I got to go tell my dad I can't get married. And I, you know, she said, I'm in New York trying to pick out bridesmaids dresses and my wedding dress. And I was like, it's okay. Just swap out grooms. <laughs> and she was like, who do you think you are? Well, I had nothing to lose. What in the world did I have to lose? Yeah. You know? So she went, she drove to Jackson, Tennessee. That's where she's from and told her dad she couldn't get married and mm -hmm. came back. And she was like, I need some time to figure my life out. And I think that lasted about two days. And that she, lasted yeah, about two days. She called me and said, you know, I want to see you. Let's go to dinner. No. I had a lot of game back then, Savannah. Oh, dear God, I bet. A lot of game. This episode of Unlocked is sponsored by Better Help. You guys know that I have spoken about BetterHelp before and I am absolutely obsessed. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and you never take a moment to think about what you need for yourself. I am so guilty of that. Raising two kids right now is beyond exhausting and I get to the end of the day sometimes and I just feel depleted, like I need a little extra push. And that is where BetterHelp comes into play. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. I absolutely love using a therapist with BetterHelp. And when I feel like I need a little change and one therapist isn't working for me, I can easily switch and get another one. Therapy has been an absolute game changer for me. It has helped me to learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries, which 
I think we all need. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Savannah today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash savannah today's episode of unlocked is brought to you by progressive insurance most of you listening right now are probably multitasking yep while you're listening to me talk you're probably also driving cleaning exercising or maybe even grocery shopping but if you're not in some kind of moving vehicle there's something else you can be doing right now getting an auto quote from progressive insurance it's easy and you could save money by doing it right from your phone drivers who save by switching to progressive save nearly $700 on average and auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner and more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year. So you're protected no matter what. Multitask right now. Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join the over 29 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates national average 12 month savings of $698 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June of 2021 and May of 2022. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. That had to have been hard though because her dad was close with him, right? Mm. No? Sort of. Sort of? Didn't really. No. He said he was proud of her for cutting ties with him okay yeah see because i mean i know what auntie that had to have been hard for her because it's really tough in the south Mm -hmm. getting engaged now i gotta get married i gotta but knowing you don't want to but you don't want to hurt the person or you don't it's i've been there i've done it oh have you really it is not fun you've been there i've been there (laughs) it is not fun i know and to have the whole world watch your engagement on national television bad it was i knew when it was happening i knew this cannot be happening like i was mad so when we were all together and the cameras were rolling and that wonderful moment you knew in the back of your mind that it, it wasn't should not the right be happening thing. wow i knew walking out there i was like this can't not be happening so it's like i knew right then why didn't you walk over and say jay get me out of here right now let's go to corner pub <laughs> don't tell anybody where we're going grab the kids and allison we're out you know what i probably should have <laughs> looking back i should have but when you're on t- and two part of me was like all right we can make it work we can get you know but I just knew he did it because his career was falling apart. So yeah, he wanted something that wasn't falling apart. I can understand that. It you know, and it goes back to what I was talking about with the flats. Once the train gets to rolling down the tracks, it's really really hard to slow it down. Yeah. So when it's heading in a certain direction and you feel it and you know it, it's hard to get those brakes and like. And slam when on that them. when it stopped. Did, what was the feeling that you had? Was there like heartbreak associated with it or was there relief? You know, honestly, in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm still mourning the loss of the flats, mm. even though there wasn't an official like breakup. Um, most of my adult life, it's all that I've known. Yeah. Getting on that bus and going out and singing to people and seeing what your music does and how it's touched people is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's better than any drug you could ever be on. Yeah. And to have that stripped away from you, not on your own terms, Mm -hmm. uh, was a very painful thing. Mm. And to not have known in March the 7th of 2020 when we were in New Jersey doing our last show that that was the last time the three of us would be on stage together makes me really sad to think about. Well, because 20, 20 years, you said. Yeah. Like you. Yeah. Well, I mean, including playing at the bars, probably 24 years, something like that together, you know. Wow. And so to not have had time to give it its proper goodbye and to really savor those moments. And you know what? Well, it's maybe good because 
I'm tired of seeing three farewell tours from the same person over and over again. I feel yeah, like no, there's yeah. never just one farewell tour. It's like <laughs> we're going to say three or four farewells. Kiss has been on the road saying goodbye for 10 years now. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Literally. I mean, they really have. Alabama's been saying goodbye for 15 years at least. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. I'm like, oh, another farewell tour. I know. So do you think there would ever be a chance of you guys yeah, coming I'm, back? I mean, it, it, we're we're uh, all in uh, such uh, a different... Uh, well, I'm, <laughs> I would want to say uh, never say never, right? Yeah. We're in such different places right now and don't really communicate on a consistent basis. Gary's out kind of doing his own thing, and I think he's enjoying being the boss and calling all the shots and i i, I don't um begrudge him for that yeah uh, it's hard it must be hard to i know it is because i was in it too but it's hard to be the lead singer and have to consider other people's opinions because you have partners i i can't imagine how liberating that must be for him to do yeah. things the way he wants to do it now but it's also liberating for me too, because yeah. there were times in our career that I looked at things and I and I would go, I absolutely know this is not the right thing to do, but because I'm outvoted, we're gonna do it anyway and we're gonna crash and burn here because it's a dumb decision. Yeah. And so all of us probably shared those frustrations at some point or another. Mm -hmm. Even though we love each other and there was no hate or any misgivings, we're on totally different pages now. And of course, Jodon, went through his very public yeah. debacle a couple of years ago and he's better than I've heard him in 10 years. I mean, he's oh, I 19 months sober and he's, he's enjoying having some peace and living, learning how to live again without his addiction. And so yeah. I'm really, really, really proud of him and where he's at right now. And I love that. There are just so many steps that would have to take place in order for us to get back to even talking about it. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's ever too late. No, it's not too late. I just, yeah. I mean, I think that the further we get away from it, the harder, harder it is to it put, is. It, put it back together. For sure. So it would have to, you know, I mean, it's been, what, three years now? Is my math mm -hmm. correct? So yeah. it, would have to, it would have to be, you know. Almost, yeah. That's, wow. A little over three years. Yeah, it's a little over three years. And it's weird not going out and playing music like that. Like I said, that's all I've ever known. Well, because known, now so. you're on the other side of it. You've got your that's, own label. Yeah. That Red Street Records, that presents its own challenges because, you know, a lot of times we live in this world of instant gratification. People yeah. feel entitled. They want instant success. And they don't realize that you can have all the talent in the world, but it still requires a whole lot of work. That's what people don't realize is they think just because they see your face plastered somewhere yeah. that it's like, oh, you get this easy life. You get everything handed to you. When in reality, it's like, no, I work day in and day out for this. Yeah, you know, as well yeah. as anybody. I mean, this you don't wake up and all of a sudden everything's in your lap and you have all this success. Mm -hmm. People don't see the grind. You know, they don't see the years of playing down at the bars on Broadway till three in the morning and exhausted because you have to get up and go to some server job at 630 in the morning. You know, they, yeah. they see the fruits of all of that hard work when they see you on an award show or a TV show or whatever. And it still requires sweat equity to yeah. this day. That's what it still requires in order to be successful. Mm-hmm. One hundred percent. And even though people go on these talent shows like The Voice and X Factor and America's Got Talent and whatever. and Yeah, they, let's just promote every show known to man, Jay. They still got to go out. And, uh, well, I know. But it, <laughs> the problem that I have with all those shows I is they you. still have to go out and be entertainers. Yeah, you do. And they're not equipped for it. Mm -mm. They, because you get this fast success, yeah. it seems like. And then you just expect all these things. Yeah to happen for you. I know. And 90% of them don't make it because they're not equipped for it. Well, yeah, and that's, I have seen, it's crazy. Like, as you've seen the entitlement of a lot of artists that are just like, well, why don't I have this? Why yeah. don't I have that? Why don't I? And it's like, how many hours have you put in for this? Yeah. And they, they get a record deal and they think that it's smooth sailing and then they're shocked a year later when they get dropped because they haven't been willing to put the work in yeah. to help themselves and they expect everyone else around them to make it happen for them. Mm -hmm. 
they get a team at a record label, and they get a management company, and they think all these people are going to magically wave a wand and make it happen yeah, for them. Yeah, it doesn't happen that the way. The unique position I have being the head of Red Street is I can sit down, ask an artist to do something, and they know I'm not yeah. asking them to do anything I haven't already done myself. Mm-hmm. You that almost is, yawned right there. I almost did. I'm putting you to sleep. Hey, I've been up since 6 o'clock. Well, I'm your eighth interview in a row today. Well, I saved the best for last. <laughs> no, so with... That, that had to have been hard, though, transitioning from being the artist to... Shut up, what? Jay. <laughs> had to have been hard transitioning from being the artist to now being the one behind the artist. You know, it, it wasn't as hard as you might think. I think that um, it was easier than I expected it to be because I didn't realize that the whole time that I was an artist and on the road, I was learning and getting an education that yeah. really money couldn't buy. You know, mm -hmm. I was doing on the job training and I learned all the aspects of the business from putting a tour together and budgeting and, and you know, doing a record and making sure you stayed uh, within the budget for a production and putting a, a stage show together and mm -hmm. what that looked like and how those costs were amortized over an entire tour and all, all that sort of stuff that never really thought about twice when I was in the middle of it. Yeah. But now I can sit down with an artist and go, well, here's why you do this, and here's why we do that, and this leads to this, and you get from point A to point B to lead you to point, you know, yeah. D. And so it's been really fun to use a different skill set, mm -hmm. you know? That's what I've really enjoyed about it. Well, because now you know yeah. both worlds, which is awesome. I do. So how was touring whenever the kids came along? Because you it got was two tougher. kids. It was tougher. Yeah, Maddie and Dylan, I, 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 it was tougher because I had to um, – I had to really miss a lot of things early on, and that just breaks your heart when you're getting mm -hmm. sent videos and pictures of birthdays and first baseball games. And, you know, it's, you know, why you're out there doing it. So yeah. that keeps you going, but it still sucks to have to sit and know that you're missing. Especially you, know. you because you are such a softy. Yeah, I'm pretty sentimental. Yeah, you're. I am. No, you're a softy. Yeah, well, somebody has to be in the family, Savannah. <laughs> you know, Allison's heart is a rock. There's nothing that's going to penetrate that <laughs> armor. I'm dead. You know that's the that, truth. It is. She is very, like, you're just the soft one. Mother's Day. Yeah. Kids make her these sweet cards. I make her, make her these cards. We put them out on the countertop in the kitchen, you know, and she displays them for a day. They were in the trash the next day. I opened up, throw something away. I was like, Oh my God, I just poured my heart out in that card there. And there it is with egg yolk all over it <laughs> in the trash. I, okay. It's amazing. She's like, well, I mean, if you just keep everything, it just clutters everything up. I mean, you gotta, you gotta purge. You gotta get rid of stuff. I'm like a day later. A day later. Are you kidding me? We can't, we can't get a week out of a card. I think y'all are hilarious. It's unbelievable. It really is. Yeah. Okay. And so then transitioning from... No, I've, I, I, I don't, I haven't transitioned. I'm still a man. <laughs> okay. As of today, yeah. going from being on the road for 20 years and yeah. then you guys had a show. We did. This family rules. Yeah. That was, how was that experience? Well, I mean, I loved it and I feel like I was well prepared for it. Having yeah. been on your all show so many times, you were kind enough to bring us on and uh, every time you needed a ratings boost, we would pop on there. Exactly. Um, we just called very, Jay DeMarcus. Very grateful for that. Now, you know that you and I never got a scene together the whole time. We never got to go do anything fun together the whole time we did that did show. Did we not? You and I were never in the same room in the same scene together, except for your engagement. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. I think we went to lunch one time, but there was like a group of Maybe. Folks. I don't know. I can't remember. See, you didn't I'm get bummed to, out about that. I know, because that was the life of the party. Yeah. So well, how was... Too much magic. <laughs> too much too magic much in magic. the same. <laughs> too much magic. They couldn't have too big personalities. I loved being on the show. I loved filming the show. I loved doing something with my kids. It was great. Dylan was money. Yeah. Money. He's kind of built for it. He, he really is, because yeah. he'd be like, we have to work. I know. Like... We, we have to work. I know. It, it was amazing. I loved it too. He would like, he was, I think, 
eight at the time, maybe seven. And he would see where the cameras were and he would ask me, he'd go, dad, is that camera going to catch what I'm doing over here? Cause I'm doing some funny stuff. <laughs> and I'd be like, funny. I mean, they're not really concerned about like capturing just you and what you're doing. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to, and he would always want to know like if, if they were going to, yeah. if they were going to get something. You want to stop hitting funny. the sofa? I'm sorry. I'm very animated with my hands. You are. Um, but We're going to hear every few seconds. I know. It was fun, though. We had a we had a blast doing that. That's amazing. He really is. And his voice yeah. is insane. Yeah. Like, he is he's very, only gotten better. He's very musically inclined. It's been fun to watch him develop into really loving and appreciating music. So Now, does he want to do music? Yeah. He's, he's like, I'm starting to teach him piano, so he's starting to make up his own little songs, and he's written his first lyric that we've, I've got a song like halfway completed that he's written. 90 really? percent of it i've helped him with a couple of things here yeah. and there but and how is it it's fantastic i mean it sounds like a 10 year old wrote it the lyrics but it's fantastic <laughs> it sounds like a 10 year old wrote it why what's it about it's called welcome home it's like yeah I, he said i want to write a song about how safe and secure i hear i feel when i'm with my family and i come when i come home oh yeah he's a softy like me that's amazing and it was actually really good he sang it for me, and I recorded it on my voice memo. No. Mm -hmm. I want to hear it. I did a track in the studio, put his vocal on it. I cannot wait. That's cool. amazing. So what are his... So he wants to do music. He wants to be a singer, for sure. Okay. He loves football. He's playing football and basketball right now. But okay. He, um, he's got a real natural ability for music like his his instincts and his knack for it are yeah. very very natural he's got the things that you can't teach no phrasing and control and pitch reference and all the things that you want someone to have yeah. he has it that's amazing because yeah. how old is he now he's 10 now he'll be that's 11 crazy. in july that is crazy he does not look 10 i know he's huge he is where does he get that from well um my father-in-law robert was big really was six four Okay. Yeah. He was huge. And Allison's tall. Yeah. You know, so. She is. Yeah. I think she's maybe a little taller than me. She may be. Yeah. I don't know about with shoes on. <laughs> with shoes on. You, I mean, you wear like heels. I do. I do. Does yeah. You're just hurt short. your lower back at all? And sometimes it does. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Okay. So Maddie, what's the, what would you say are the two biggest differences between the two of your kids? Maddie is a little more of an introvert okay obviously and and you know dylan's more of an extrovert but she is very very she, i took her to work with me yesterday she shadowed me all day long i was amazed at how mature and how well-spoken and funny she is and i it was the first time because of school and you know i've been working hard and i've been yeah. traveling a bunch too with a new group that i put together generation radio but it was the first time I've got to spend an entire day with her and just watch her carry herself in front of people and mm -hmm. how uh, how wonderful she was interacting with all the people at the label that worked for me. And she's just, she's turned into a little human being and it's really remarkable to watch yeah. and it's sad at the same time because you Aww. realize that the little girl is, you know, gone forever. That's she's turned so into sad. a person. Did you ever want more kids after Dylan? I, a couple of years ago, like after the pandemic, we started to come out of it, you know, yeah. I tried to talk Allison into having like one more, like a little baby, like having a, having yeah. a third one, but she wasn't having any of it. She wasn't having it. Nope. No. <laughs> no. She was like, I told you I'd give you two and that's it. We're done. We're done. So we've had sex twice and <laughs> that's it. For anyone that knows Jay knows he's probably not lying. Well, I mean, you know. Well, yeah. You we made the, the most show. of the two times. We got two kids. I cannot. Oh, yeah. my God. That's pray amazing. For me. We will. We will say all the prayers for you. I appreciate that. We'll say all the prayers. Okay. So, what's next? Well, I've been uh, on the road with a new band that I put together, Generation Radio, with mm -hmm. some. It really started during the pandemic okay out of sheer boredom like nobody could play nobody could go out and be in front of a crowd so i called up one of my dear friends jason chef who was the lead singer and the bass player for chicago yeah for 32 years remember i met him um at the 
What's the Italian spot in Belmede? I guess it's not there anymore. Giovanni's. Giovanni's. West. Giovanni's yes. West. I hate that they shut that down. I know. I love that place. Um, so I called him up. I called my buddy, Dean Castronovo, who had been in Journey for 17 years, and he played drums, but he sings like Steve Perry. I mean, he's incredible. I called him up. I said, what do you guys think about just making some music, just to have some fun? And yeah. I called another couple of friends of mine, Tom Yankton and Chris Rodriguez, who I'd known for years here in town, awesome guitar players and singers in their own right, session guys and really great singers and performers. We camped out in my home and recorded a bunch of songs and put out a record last year, August of last year. And it turned into this really fun thing to where we would go out and do shows, corporate events, private shows and things like that, fairs and festivals and do all of our hits from all of our bands together. So That's we'll do awesome. like Rascal Flats and then we'll do a Journey song, do a Chicago song. And now we have Steve Ferroni uh, from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers because Dean went back to Journey so Steve is out playing drums with us now. Now we do Tom Petty songs. Which That's really amazing. Yeah. That is so fun. It is so much fun. So you love doing that. I love doing it. I love being on stage with, it, they always kid me because I, they say I'm trying to make them sound old, but I love being on stage with my heroes that I grew up listening to. All the old know? guys. And they're kind of shaped my musical, you know. Taste and yeah, guidance and yeah, all the definitely things. Definitely huge influences on on me growing up yeah and to be on stage playing their hits with them is really really i don't know it's surreal this episode of unlocked is brought to you by viator for those of you that have not heard of viator your life is about to be changed viator has over 300,000 bookable travel experiences in over 190 countries they offer everything from simple tours to extreme adventures and all the interesting stuff in between. Viator is the go-to place to go to book memorable travel experiences. I personally just booked a super fun experience here in Nashville, and it was a game changer. This experience was the Nashville Craft Cocktail and Fine Dining Tour. I absolutely loved it. If you know me, you know I love food. This tour was unbelievable. I mean, from the moment you arrive, you're transported to a world of luxury and sophistication, and you get to indulge in five one-of-a-kind cocktails, and they're each perfectly paired with delectable bites that will leave your taste buds dancing. You start off at the Hermitage Hotel, and then you end at the 21C Museum Hotel, and that hotel was amazing. The artwork is phenomenal, and the drinks, well, absolutely amazing. So I hope that you guys hop on this Viator train with me. Download the Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking. One app over 300,000 experiences you'll remember. Do more with Viator. Download the Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking. I love that. Okay, yeah. I'll have to come. If you're lucky, I'll show up to a show. I've invited you several times. You're such a liar. Yes, you always Go say you have something it. else to do. Oh, do I? Yeah, I got it. I'll show you. Okay. Yeah, you're going straight you to hell. Shot. You're going to bust hell wide ass open. You were like, hey, I don't want to fool with downtown the traffic down there, remember? That was one time. Yeah. One time. Marathon Music Works. Yep. One time, Jay. I'm not going downtown to fight that traffic. <laughs> You know what? Shut it. The I truth, said it one time. The truth comes out here. Savannah. Okay, truth comes out. Confessional. Are you? Are you? What artist are you working with right now? Uh, are you trying to find more artists? We, we're always looking, but always not looking. You know, if yeah. something comes along that's undeniable, and we gotta have it. We'll yeah. sign it for sure. On the countryside, uh, we have uh, Ryan Griffin was our first signing. He had a hit a couple years ago with Salt Lime and Tequila. Yeah. He's got a great new song out right now called Heart to Break. We've got this new act called Neon Union. They're incredible, incredibly gifted singers and songwriters. Um, it's the very first male black and white duo. Really? It, yeah. Is it country? Yeah, it's country. They got their first single out called About Damn Time. Okay. It's doing well on the charts right now. And uh, we signed a new guy that will be coming out with some music here in a couple months. His name is Ryan Larkins. 
and he's really great. He's got a throwback to an old traditional sound, like a that's Randy amazing. Travis or a Don Williams or someone like that. So. That's amazing. And on the Christian side, we just had our first big hit with Consumed by Fire's uh, First Things First. It's great. Wow. And uh, we got Jason Crabb. I think you know Jason yes, Crabb. Yes, yes. Uh, he's on our label. Uh, this gal from Dallas, it's amazing, uh, Veth Luna. Okay. And she was the most played artist on Air One last year. So oh my gosh. we're really starting to, for a company as young as we are, we're starting to stack up some nice little wins. I love it. I love it. And too. I mean, you look good. Thank you. Look you look young. Thanks. You look like you're putting your health first, I finally. am young. That's why I look young. For once in your life. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, I got, I think like everybody, you know, you go, I, the pandemic really hit me hard. Like, I kind of went through mild depression, started eating my feelings <laughs> all the time. You know, just. I, it, well, we had nothing else to do. I know. I was post-mating, like, I, I had to go. I had to go get some counseling for my addiction to Postmates and DoorDash. And <laughs> oh, was, is that what the addiction was too? Oh my God. And alcohol. <laughs> I was backing my truck up to the Bud's Liquor here in town, just letting them fill it up. Literally. And so, and so a year later I woke up, I was like, that dude's fat. Like he's let himself go. <laughs> he's let himself go. And I did, had no friends like you that would pull me off to the side and go, do some push ups from the table. I said, please. <laughs> You really do look great. I appreciate it. Thank you. That means a lot. I've um, I've tried to do better. Yeah. I'm taking karate again now, too. Are you? Yeah. yeah. No way. When I went away to college, I didn't have time for it anymore. So okay. the pandemic hit, had nothing to do. I was like, I've got to move and exercise some. So I started taking karate again. Okay. And then golf. What's it? You know, Chase always says he kicks your ass in golf. You know better than that, right? Is it true, though? I beat his ass every time we play. Okay. He's a liar. Is he? Yes. About golf. Okay. He's uh, he's good, but he's not as good as he thinks he is. I think you should play with Grayson. I'd love to play with Grayson's Grayson. Grayson's gotten good. Has he? Grayson's gotten good. I need to good. take them both out. You should. I know. Because Grayson, I think, whoops Chase. Does he really? I think so. Oh, I'm going to have to give him some crap I about think that. so. I think so. Yeah. I, he, I think he, in all honesty, I think Chase has beaten me once. Are you being for real? I'm being honest with you. For real. See, he, he's all talk. You can't listen to what he says. <laughs> you cannot about golf. And he, he's a cheater, too. You, you get he? out and cheat. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. He likes to use the old foot wedge and kick it over to where he can get to it. The old foot wedge. Oh, yeah. That is amazing. Yep. Well, I'm overdue, though. I need to take him out. You do. Him. You should. You should play with you Greg. You should come play with us. I can't. My brain moves too fast for golf. It does? Yes, it does. It's a little too... It gives, I feel like it would give me anxiety. I don't even know how to play. I need to do some lessons. Because that is... You secure a lot of business deals on the golf course. You do. And you can play forever. You can play until you're an old man. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's a great way to keep active. For sure. For sure. Just... My father-in-law actually gave me this advice. He said, never, ever take your wife golfing with you because then you're stuck with her for the rest of your life. And that's the only window of time you have for four hours by yourself with your buddies. Stop. So don't ever get your wife involved in okay. playing golf. Okay, men, you hear this. It's the best advice I've ever And I was given it, by, it was given by my father-in-law, which was. In all fairness, I don't think Allison would ever play golf. She played golf in high school. Did she? She did. She was on the golf team. No. Mm-hmm. She played with me on our honeymoon. We got like six holes in. She was like, it's hot. I don't like this. It's hot. And we went back to the hotel. She played with me one more time about a year. We'd been married about a year and it was over. Four holes in. She was like, this is too hot. I'm sweating. I'm miserable. I need to go back to the house. <laughs> I love her. That is amazing. She does nothing. What do you mean? We don't hike. We don't see movies. We don't, we don't do anything. She's well, a homebody. I mean, I do like hiking. I cook. You know what I've wanted to do? I've wanted to go start biking. Uh, you know what? Biking is fun. We ride bikes at the beach a lot yeah. over in Hilton Head. It is fun. But like actual cycling, like Ooh, do like 15 ass, miles though. a day. I want to get to like 50, at least 15 miles a day. Those seats hurt your butt. But there's pants for that. Oof. There's pants for that. The glutes all sore and walk See? funny the next day. I'll... I'm, I think I'm going to try it. 
So just don't hit me as you're riding down. You're going to wear the helmet and all the business? <laughs> I'm, i got to wear Elbow pads, yeah. knee pads? You'll see me going down. Just don't I hit me. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> just don't hit me. I won't hit you. I don't like it when bike when bikers get in the middle of like a Hillsboro Road. Yeah. And have a whole line of traffic behind No, them. I don't like when you hold up traffic. I, it just drives me crazy. Yeah, I'm with you. All right. Well, thank you, Jay, for not turning your back on us. I appreciate it. You didn't talk about my book. Your book? Oh, we didn't talk about your book. Mm-hmm. I love your book. Thank I you. thought it was the realest thing you've ever done. It was very therapeutic. Okay. And are you trying to say everything else I've done is fake? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Thank you, Savannah. No. Listen, it's the most real thing you've ever done in your life. Uh, <laughs> no, I just think it was the most like, it was the first time people actually got to see you and yeah. not Rascal Flats or a band. No, I appreciate that. The opportunity came up from someone that had known me since I literally moved to town and I didn't take it at first and then it's, they circled back around and I thought, you know what, this would be fun to really give credit to the people in my life that came along that gave me opportunity and, yeah. and, and my mom, I wanted to honor her and I Aww. talk a lot about her in there. and it. My my life took a lot of broken road turns to get to where it is, and I I wanted it was very therapeutic to revisit those moments in my life to where yeah. I knew that it was almost supernatural and and it could not be explained any other way than God having His hand in my life and I'm telling my you, path. it was it's a book that you don't want to put down because you want to hear like what happened next. I appreciate that. Shotgun Angels. It's so good. And where can you find it? You can find it Amazon in there? Yeah. I think it's available now for like 98 cents. It was on the bestseller list for two days. Hey, two days more than I've had. Yeah. It was fun. I really loved the opportunity. I loved doing it. And it, if for nothing else, it really helped me. Yeah. See, and if, like you said, if nothing else. Yeah. As long as it helped you, then you got something good from it. It was great. I, I really loved being able to shine the light on the people behind the scenes in my life that yeah. were very important in supporting me and praying for me and cheering me on from the sidelines. Well, because that's all it takes is mm-hmm. having those few people to get you through. I agree. Because it really, the book was amazing. Thank I you. loved it. Thank you. Well, I love you and thank, thank you for you. having me on finally. Thank you. Fi- finally. Your fans have been screaming for it. <laughs> They've been screaming for I it. I saw your feed and they've been demanding that I be on this show. Okay, well. And I appreciate you finally giving in to your fans' wishes. Yes, thank you for the charity work that you have done today. You got it. I appreciate it. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> <laughs>